At CrossFit Lincoln, our passion is positively impacting and changing lives by creating a strong, brave, healthy community through education. We talk about nutrition, fitness, mindset, and more. From the Roro Flix studio, I'm Aaron Perky Pyle with Phil Kniep, Paul Konarski, and Emily Breedy. Are you ready? <laughs> no. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. Welcome to CrossFit Lincoln Connections. My name is Aaron Perky Pyle. I'm here with Emily Breedy and Heather Ford. Pretty excited to be here today. How are you ladies doing today? I'm awesome. Great. Yep. Awesome. Well, I have a, uh, an icebreaker here this morning, this afternoon. What time? I don't know what time it is. Well, whenever you're listening to this, I have an icebreaker. <laughs> My icebreaker today is, first question, uh, what movement do we not do enough of or we really don't do at all that you would like to see more in workouts at the gym? Heather. Uh, yeah, I'd have to say L sits. Ooh. There's like a hundred yeah. different ways to do them, and uh, we do them very seldomly. Okay. What if I can't even physically do one of those? That's because you. Why? That's why. Because we don't do them. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's why we do. That's why. Um, all right. Mine is called a dirty dumbbell complex. Ooh. This is something that was introduced to me recently. So it's two dumbbells, and you do a deadlift. And then you do a clean and jerk. So you tap the floor and do a clean and jerk. And then you do a cluster. And that's one. That sounds awful. Yeah. I also think we should do more <laughs> double presses, but I could only pick one. So. I like double press. Emily. Uh, I would like to say glute bridges. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should do more glute bridges. Okay, Paul. I was going to say, I'm saying that because Paul's not here. <laughs> well, I was going to say Turkish get ups, but we just did those. So. Yeah. That's cool. Or glute bridges. Or glute bridges. Yeah. Or both little complex get up glue bridge i don't know all right yeah. yeah all right i've got one more uh one has to stay so you could only do this movement the other two you don't ever get to do ever again one has to stay uh wall balls thrusters burpees one has to stay burpees all the way i could do burpees all day oh the other two go yeah yeah um i choose wall balls I also choose wall balls. What? Yeah. Why do you choose wall balls? Because I am good at them, I think. Same. <laughs> yeah. And they cannot go so heavy. Yeah. I also <laughs> like that idea. All right. Well, we recently have um, hosted a nutrition workshop at the, the gym, and Heather presented, and I presented, and Emily presented. And so what we wanted to do today is just kind of talk through that uh, material and kind of give you a... a a shorter version without all the handouts and things of, of that. Yeah, we had slideshows and everything. <laughs> that's, it was scary. It was you scary. can also edit this out if we say something wrong. So. Yeah, that's even better. <laughs> um, so we started with uh, Emily, and Emily, you talked about protein. And so let's just jump into that. I know we've had a podcast before on protein, but maybe someone hasn't heard that yet. So uh, how much protein should we be eating? Uh, it depends. Wait, what? What does that mean? <laughs> uh, it depends on if you are male, female. It depends on how much you weigh. It depends on if you're active, if you're young, if you're old, um, if you're somewhere in the middle. So there's a pretty good range. Say if you are more active, you need more protein. If you're a male, you need more protein. Um, if you're younger and growing, you're going to need more po protein to help you grow. And then also if you're older, you're going to need a little bit more protein to help sustain um, the body that you have. Okay, so if I was going to calculate how much protein I needed, because I know I need more, I'm active, I'm male, tell me, uh, tell us how do we kind of come to that calculation? Uh, yeah, there's like a range, uh, usually between 0.8 to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So if we were going to take you, I would ask how much you weigh, and then I would probably multiply it times about 1.5. Okay, so that gives me on the upper end of the range then... Yeah, because you're a male and you're active. Okay. And I know that your goal is to gain muscle mass. Yep. How so. about Heather over here? What are you going to tell her? <laughs> I, first of all, I would not ask her how much she weighs. <laughs> but um, no, I would uh, I would probably do about one. One would be she's an active female. And so one point uh, zero grams times her body weight would give her a good estimate of where to start. So you can start somewhere and then adjust down or up if you need to. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to lose weight. And you, let's go, to gain weight, I'd want to go 1.5 times my body weight. Uh, what if I'm trying to lose weight? What, what do I use? Do I use my current weight? Do I use a weight I'm trying to get to? 
Yeah, so if you're trying to lose weight, you would try to stick with your ideal body weight or your goal weight. Um, so if you're 200 pounds and maybe 175 is a healthier weight for you, um, then you would take that 175 and eat that amount of protein. Okay. Um, so now that I've got that idea of what protein I want, what's your favorite type of protein, Heather? Mm, buffalo meat. Buffalo meat. Yeah. Okay. I like chicken. It's pretty boring, but I like chicken. Mm. What's your favorite protein? You didn't tell me this icebreaker question. I know. But <laughs> um, we won't tell I, all the other protein sources. They won't be offended. Man, I like them all. I like to make sure I have a variety of protein. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. All right. So let's say, though, um, now that I know I need to eat, let's say, 200 grams of protein a day, um, how do I figure out how much? I know you went through this kind of <laughs> this kind of uh, formula yeah. at the workshop, and yeah. I'm going to put this in the podcast on the uh on oh. the video so that they can see it, but kind of walk us through how they calculated. Well, I used that slide so I could remember. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> so, yeah, take the amount of pro uh, protein you need for a day, which you said is 200 grams. Um, say you eat about three meals. It's a less even number than I had for the presentation. <laughs> um, I don't know, 200 divided by three. Oh, 0.66. Yeah. 66 grams of protein per meal. Okay. Um, so you have that. And then from there... If you want to work into, depending on the type of protein, so you use chicken. Um, so you would, there's seven grams of protein in one ounce of chicken. You can put that in math on the slide. And then, um, so 66 divided by seven will give you the amount of ounces you need of chicken. Divide that by 16 gives you pounds. Kind of tell you how many pounds of chicken you need for that one meal. And so if you want to make it for a week of dinner or lunch or something like that you just multiply times how many meals you wanted to make so i'm actually going to need three times that amount for all of my protein for the week right if i'm going to have assuming i eat 21 meals a week yeah breakfast lunch and dinner times seven yeah if you eat the same amount of protein the okay. same kind of protein yeah okay um so then after i do that what am i supposed to do with that the, after you calculate how much protein you yeah, need? Yeah, after I calculate my protein, what am I supposed to do with that now? Um, well, then you would move on to the next step about building your meal. Hey, that was mine. <laughs> is that where, is that yeah, where we're going? Hey, I teed it up and you, and you hit it out of the park. That was great. I was great. like, you let Aaron talk now. <laughs> That's the next step. <laughs> yeah, so we, the next thing we want to do is we want to plan our week. Um, you, like I talked about, we have basically 21 meals a week. And so you got breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And maybe you have a snack, maybe you have multiple snacks, but you've got at least three, uh, you know, three meals a day, seven days a week. Maybe you only eat twice. I don't know. But either way, you're going to try to get that same amount of um, caloric intake in. And so what we encourage you to do is actually map that out. So make a little grid, use a pencil and paper, use a spreadsheet, all of Excel, make a spreadsheet or Google Sheets so that you can actually start laying out what you're going to eat every day. And so you want to add protein. You want to add a vegetable, lots of vegetables, maybe a starch, or you do want a starch, and then you want a little bit of fat. So maybe avocados or olive oil or something like that. Starchy foods are more the potatoes and the rice and quinoa, something like that. So you want to have about a quarter of the plate that's starchy. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> you said quinoa. Funny. Quinoa. Where, how, 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 is this, how do you say it? Quinoa. Yeah. That's what I said. Oh. Quino quinoa. So yeah. you want the quinoa, <laughs> and you only want about a quarter of that per, you know, per plate when right. you fill out your plate. And most of it's vegetables, and you have about a quarter of your, your plate that's protein. But you're laying all those things out, and then you, after you've got an idea of how you're going to build, build your meals, then you want to look at maybe recipes that you're going to use that chicken in. You're going to use that buffalo meat in. I don't even know what I would use buffalo meat for. What do you what do you use your buffalo meat for? I use it like ground beef. Oh, okay. It's really lean. Yeah. Has a good flavor. Awesome. Yeah. You can get it Aldi for six ninety nine a pound. Wow. Grass awesome. fed. You don't yeah. hunt your own buffalo. So. I haven't hunted a buffalo in a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I tried once uh, and it was just really hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got thick skin. <laughs> Unlike me. All right, so <laughs> the next thing that you do after you've planned out your your uh, recipes, you've planned out the meals, then what we want you to do is start to make your grocery list. Um, you usually shop at the same stores consistently. We're creatures of habit. And so 
um, what I do is list out the stores that I know I'm going to visit and underneath each of those kind of record the things that I know I can get at those stores because I know where they are. I know exactly what quantities they have, the brands that I prefer and things like that. So I'll list them all out and then I'll schedule when I'm going to go, um, go grocery shopping. And then sometimes I also <laughs> use Instacart because I like to have it delivered and I don't have to go to the grocery store and fight traffic and things. What do you say, Emily? So what you're saying is to schedule the day on your calendar and the time in which you go get groceries. Absolutely. So when you plan out your week and all your appointments, you put that on there. Yeah, so there's no excuse out. for not going. Okay. You have it. Cool. You schedule an alarm so it reminds you that you need to go. Make sure you take your list with you because I've forgotten my list before, and then it's it's terrible. When are you supposed to cook your food? What? When am I supposed to cook your food? I don't know. We should. You know what we should do? We should ask. Heather about that because she knows more about meal prepping than I do. Uh, I knew a little bit about meal prepping. Heather's yeah. t- Heather talked to us about meal prepping. Heather, when should we be meal prepping our, our meals? Whatever day you choose. So what? preferably at the beginning of the week so you don't get stuck. Um, but everyone's schedules are different. Some people work on the weekend. So just pick a day that you have a little bit of free time. It could be right after you go to the grocery store. Um, and, you know, we talked a lot about, okay, now you have your plan in place, and now we have to put that plan into action. Uh, so you're going to kind of plan out every little detail as far, even as something as simple as cooking your food. And I kind of mentioned in the workshop that it's kind of arbitrary to talk about cooking your food, because yes, you know you have to cook your food. Um, but you should plan Do out- Do you have to? You don't have to. Oh, no, okay. no, no. Well, I mean, there are certain safety guidelines. So we shouldn't tell people to eat raw food, but you know. Whatever. But I could eat raw vegetables. You could eat okay. raw vegetables. Okay. Yeah. Right, but we definitely sure. want to try and cook our protein. You know, um, you do you if that's your thing. Not <laughs> cooking it. Um. Disclaimer: We do not uh, suggest eating raw meat. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, and uh, some people think about meal prepping taking hours and hours and we don't want that to be you we don't want you to be a slave to your kitchen when you do meal prep um so plan out how you're going to cook your meat how you're going to cook your veggies um and then how you're going to cook that starch um and my recommendation is to have different methods for each component um so that you can have all three things going on at once like I'm going to put my chicken in the crock pot. I'm going to roast my sweet potatoes in the oven, and I'm going to steam my broccoli on the stove. Um, and so I have everything going on at once. I can go throw in a load of laundry while all that's cooking, um, and then I come back and put it all together. Um, and then when you put it all together, you can do a couple different things. You can put it in uh, each component in its own individual container. So I have all my meat in one container, my veggies in one, and my starch in the other. Um, And then you can just kind of take out the portions as you need them throughout the week. That works for some people. Um, But if you really don't have the time, I would recommend putting each meal together in an individual container. Um, It takes up a little bit more space in your refrigerator. So you have to think about that. Maybe plan ahead a little bit. Um, You can get meal prep containers from Walmart that are relatively cheap. Um, and that way you can just grab it out of the fridge, heat it up and it's ready to go. And then you don't have an excuse to go through the drive through to snack on a bunch of food that maybe you shouldn't be eating. Um, <clears throat> you just know that it's there. And I use the analogy is Murphy proofing your nutrition. Um, Murphy's law is anything that can happen. Will you're going to get busy. The kids are going to get sick. And you're going to have to stay later at work. Um, all those things are going to happen. So if you have your meals ready to go, you're not going to make a bad choice that you're going to feel guilty about or have to try and fix later on or, you know, whatever. So. Sure. Yeah. Emily, what do you think? (laughs) What's your meal prep tip? Um, a meal prep tip. If you've never meal prepped before, maybe don't try to meal prep every single thing at Mm -hmm. one time. Uh, pick one thing, one meal or one part of one meal, maybe you just prepare your protein um, for your dinners for the week. That way when you get home, usually meat takes the longest to cook for the most part. Um, So if you plan that and you cook your protein on the weekends for your dinner, um, that's one place to start. I wouldn't try to do it all at one time, get super overwhelmed if you try to do that. So that's my tip. Awesome. Yeah. 
What's your favorite recipe to meal prep? Uh, I, don't, I don't use recipes. <laughs> um, I just use ingredients and then throw them together and whatever seasoning I feel like okay. that day. Of. Well, it sounds like a recipe that's not recorded anywhere. Um, define recipe then, I suppose. Okay, well, um, <laughs> what's a dish that you prepare regularly that's similar to itself over and over again? <laughs> Repeatable. I love it. That's very great. Uh, so one that I repeat, I guess, weekly, and also I think I post a few times online. Um, it has uh, kale, sweet potatoes, cauliflower. Um, it has some local pork in it and occasionally an egg, depending on the day. So I've seen you eat that a lot. It's so good. It looks good. <laughs> looks good. How about you? What's your favorite recipe or dish or meal to prepare? Um, I make something that's very similar to <laughs> Emily because I want to be just like her. Um, it's a uh, called a you know Cole Sager. He's a CrossFit Games athlete. Um, he put out a recipe a while ago called Sager Slaw, and it has. Uh, Cabbage slaw, I, I usually add in some kale, sweet potatoes, um, <clears throat> excuse me, hamburger or buffalo meat. Um, and then you just mix it all together and then add some eggs on top. Awesome. And it, you can change it up. I usually add different vegetables every week or something. Just really filling and has a lot of different colors in it. So, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Aaron? What? Oh, what? Uh, I want to know what's about What's your Aaron's? favorite thing that Carrie makes for you? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. My wife Aww. does most of it. Um, uh, she came up with a, or found a recipe at one point that's like a turkey skillet. So it's ground turkey and onions and some spices in there. And then there's butternut squash. And then you can throw in asparagus that's cut up or something like that. You could, So again, it's one of those yeah. things that you can kind of mix and match. You can either do squash, you can do sweet potatoes, you can throw in some of the heartier vegetables and, and mix that up. I made that for our group. Yeah, it's uh, pretty good. Yeah. Um, I so, ate it, so yeah, it's good. Yeah, I mean, I choked it down, so. <laughs> saying something. So I like that one. That's it. It's really simple. Uh, it's great in the fall cuz that's when you start to get more of the the potatoes and the and the squash and things that are super seasonal, so mm -hmm. love those. Any other tips, any other suggestions for people before we take off? Just to to plan. It's a plan everything more than you think you might have to and then know that it takes less time the next week and even less time after that you will get quicker at it it'll become easier <clears throat> the grocery store you'll go in know exactly where everything's at and get it, it doesn't take much time at all um, I'm at a point where I don't even have to really make a list anymore I just see what I have and go to the store and everything is just a lot easier but you just have to keep going so if you do feel overwhelmed that first time, just keep going and try it again, and it will be easier the next time, I guarantee you. Sure. Yeah. Heather? Um, I think that a lot of times, especially CrossFit athletes, they have an all-or-nothing mentality. Um, we're not just CrossFit athletes, but anybody, really. Um, and nutrition is one of those things where even little changes help. So like Emily said, if meal prepping is overwhelming to you, then just do one thing, you know, cook your meat for the week, cook your rice for the week or veggies, whatever is going to be the hardest for you to, to spend time cooking that week. Um, but any little changes help. And once you have those small changes made, then you just keep building on it. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Aaron? Uh, I would say when you are writing out your week, you've got, you know, seven, seven days a week, three meals a day, um, fill in the, like circle those dates that you know are going to be harder. Maybe you're having a client dinner. Maybe you know you have to work late. Maybe you know you're going to be traveling. And just give yourself a little more grace on those days. doesn't mean you go crazy, but you're looking for the best option wherever you're at. If you have to eat out or you're trying to plan ahead, you're looking at the menu of the place that you're going to take a client to if you have that access. And when you don't, you know, just try to make the best possible decision. Best thing I can tell you is eat a lot of veggies and later meats and you'll you'll come out better on the other side. So that's yeah. what I got. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us on CrossFit Lincoln Connections. Thank you, uh, Heather and Emily, for sharing your wisdom. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Aaron. See you later.